Hey friends, it's Jen at the Sunshine Farm. Thank you for being here today. I'm so excited to share this video with you. I want to share my favorite place with you guys and show you a little bit about where I've been spending a lot of my time. So join me for a little tour of the place I'm calling my grow room. <laughs> show you this space I want to tell you guys something just a couple months ago this was a empty room that used to be an office and probably at one point was a dining room it had a dog crate in it it had a file cabinet in it and it had a bookshelf in it and that's all it was completely empty in the middle it was boring it was my absolute least favorite spot in the house and in just a couple of months, it has become my favorite place in the house, the place where I feel relaxed and where I get to do one of my very favorite things, which is plant seeds and pot them up and put my hands in soil and watch things grow. So this is my grow room. There are two parts of this space that I love so much. The first is the DIY seed starting shelving unit that we put together in February. We made a video all about this, which I will link above. And this has become really, really awesome for us guys. Our seeds have been doing so well under the lights and they're really loving this setup. So I'm just gonna show you guys how it's working. So here's what we have going on here. This requires stepping on this stool so I can show you guys the top level, which may be my favorite. Here we have my two new fig trees. These little guys are doing great so far and I'm hardening them off to our climate since they've already started to grow leaves. These are my artichokes. The artichokes are already growing out of these pots. So soon I'm going to have to pot them up again and I'm going to have to find out where I'm gonna be able to put them because they're growing too tall for the lights. Hopefully soon here they'll be able to be outside during the day and so I won't have to worry about space for light because they can just spend most of their days outside. I am running into an issue where the weather is a little too rough outside for my seedlings and I don't have enough light space as it is, so I'm hoping things improve outside so that my seedlings can get plenty of light. I have a few different onions over there, and then I have some broccoli. Okay, so shelf number two is my tomatoes. I'm sure you guys are really excited about tomatoes because everyone seems to love them. Surprisingly, I didn't used to like tomatoes, but they're growing on me a little bit, pun intended. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and adjust these lights so that you guys can see everything pretty clearly. The nice thing about these is they're super easy to adjust quickly. So on this row I have my tomatoes, my tomatillos, and a few eggplant. And everything is doing really well. The one thing I will add is that the ones on the outside tend to suffer from not enough light. As you can see they're a little bit leggy. And that's because this light up here is centered in the middle and so the ones on the outside tend to not get enough light but I think they'll be just fine it's not a huge issue I just wish that the light was a little bit wider for them they're doing just fine though their true leaves are coming up just after their catalytons their first set of leaves which is a good sign it means that they're growing at the right pace also, you can see some cinnamon sprinkled down. That was a trick I saw from Rose at Wholesome Roots. I will link her channel below, guys, but she has some great resources for gardening. Some of the varieties I'm really looking forward to are Honey Drop. That's a beautiful cherry like a sun gold, but multicolored. Copia Tomato, which is an heirloom, and I actually saved the seeds from last year's crop. It's a yellow heirloom tomato, and I loved it. One called Orange Icicle. Glacier, which is the saladette tomato with a really nice flavor. 
red pear, yellow pear, green zebra, which I love, and then rosita eggplant, which I actually got in a seed swap, so I have no clue what that will be like. So in here I have something I'm very, very excited about. Ground cherries. I have pineapple and then I have Mary's ground cherries. Look at them, they did germinate very well. There's just one area where they haven't started germinating yet. And then I have all paste tomatoes in the rest of this tray. I planted two varieties of paste tomatoes this year. I planted the 10 Fingers of Naples, which were seeds from Fruition Seeds, a heirloom seed company here in New York. And then I planted the Opaca paste tomatoes, which were seeds purchased from M.I. Gardner. So moving on down to the third shelf, I kind of have a hodgepodge of things. Not really sure why I set it up this way, but I'm gonna show you what I have going on here. So on this shelf, I have a little tomato. So funny story with that tomato, I actually had thought I wanted to plant some of those seeds just to get one or two plants. And then I had a friend come over and she brought her six-year-old daughter and she really loved this grow room. She wanted to hang out in here. So I asked her if she wanted to help plant some seeds. So I actually just took a little pot and we planted seeds together and it was really, it was a beautiful experience for me because we don't have kiddos yet here um, in our family. And so it was really exciting for me to, to watch the joy that a child can have with growing things. And it really made me dream about having that for Chris and I and having a little one that grows up to love growing food. Anyways, moving on to a plant that's struggling a little bit and I would love to hear your thoughts on maybe why. So here I have some celery. And I just am finding that it's not doing as well as I'd like. A little sad, it's not very strong. Over in this area, I actually have some pak choy, which really needs to get out of this tray. And I'm actually putting it in the ground on Tuesday. And I've already been hardening them off. And back there, I have some Swiss chard. Look at those beautiful stems. And some beets growing. That's pretty cool. Okay guys, this is really exciting. I have a ginger experiment happening in here. So I bought some seed ginger from Fruition Seeds and you can see right there it says FR Ginger and I planted them there. So they're on a heating mat right now because ginger really needs heat in order to sprout. So I bought the seed ginger and it was about $24 for four rhizomes which was a little bit pricey, probably because it's been adapted to the Northeast and it's been grown in this climate, so I could totally understand why it might be expensive, but I thought I would try actually comparing it to store-bought organic ginger and trying to sprout those. So I'm actually doing a comparison. I planted them at the same time and they're both on the heat mat, they're both in the same soil, and they're both in the same pots. I planted them the exact same way, so I'm going to go ahead and see how each of those do, and I'm gonna make sure to continue marking them throughout the season so I can compare the store-bought versus the ginger purchased from the seed company here in upstate New York. So I'm really excited about that, and I think ginger is going to make the perfect addition to our tea garden, which I've talked about before, but something I'm really, really looking forward to. And then, you can see these seeds are labeled seven, five, and four. Those seeds are labeled as numbers and not as varieties because they're actually part of a secret gardener challenge that I'm taking part in that was started by one of my very favorite channels and good YouTube friends, Heather and Kevin over at Bare Bottom Acres. So we're gonna be doing a fun challenge. You'll see some videos about this in upcoming videos throughout the summer. And the challenge is really I was sent some seeds, I don't know who they're from, and I don't know what they are, and I'm supposed to guess along the way. So the first video in that little series will be coming out soon. And I know one is a brassica, and I know one is a tomato, and the third one doesn't look to have come up yet, but I'm pretty sure those are peppers. So we'll see. I also have something exciting sprouting, goji berries, and I'm still waiting on my stevia. That stevia, man, I've tried it once, Failed, waited weeks and weeks and weeks, nothing. So I'm trying it again, I'm using a heat mat and I'm gonna try to keep the moisture level a little bit lower, but it's a total gamble and if I don't get lucky with this, I might see if I can get a hold of some already grown stevia and then just care for it in a pot because I am planning on having it in a container anyways because it's gonna have to move inside in the fall and winter. Nothing happening there yet. Goji berries. 
I'm just gonna show you the bottom shelf, a few more seedlings that we have going on in this room. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you guys this amazing piece of furniture behind me that we got for an absolute steal and that is probably my favorite piece of furniture in this entire house. So I can't wait to share that with you guys at the end. So let's take a look at the bottom shelf, which is one of my favorites because there are lots and lots and lots of peppers. Fun fact, last year I only grew one variety of pepper from seed, serrano peppers, and this year I decided to take it the whole opposite direction and I have a ton of peppers going on. I think I have like 16 or 17 varieties of peppers growing um, so far, and I'm sure I'll buy some seedlings too of some cool varieties that I find at farmer's markets. Peppers! These guys were all bottom watered yesterday, which is why they're nice and moist now. So in the back corner there we have banana, and then we have cayenne, we have corbachi, paprika, basco, arroz con pollo, Chinese five color, habanera peppers, which is a habanero without the spice. Habaneros that have not germinated yet, but I've heard they're infamously slow. Here we have a California Wonder just popping up, Serrano's, Poblano. And then over here we have some more bell peppers, Big Red. We have Sweet Bell. We have more Poblano, because I love Poblano peppers. We have some Cayenne that hasn't come up yet. Sun Bright, which is another bell pepper. More Chinese Five, because I'm so excited about those. More Arroz con Pollo, which are just starting to come up. And the very last row, which is some more Tabasco and a couple more banana. And even though I have 64 cells of peppers planted and some with two or three per cell, which means I probably have 70 to 80 to 90, maybe even 100 peppers here to work with, I just planted a bunch more today. I planted eight more cells of Sweet Bell and eight more cells of Sun Bright. I also planted some more eggplant, um, an eggplant called Black Beauty, and I planted some more fun tomatoes that I actually received in a seed swap that I was pretty excited about and I just couldn't help myself. So I planted some of Brad's Atomic Grape Tomato, some Castelluto Genovese, I think, Japanese Trifle Jubilee, and Lucida Gem. I also have some parsley going on over here, and then here are my brassicas. See that lovely kale, purple cabbage, Brussels sprouts, broccoli. This whole tray right here is actually just cabbage. I have two varieties of cabbage going on here. I've actually never grown cabbage before, but I really love cabbage and I was hoping to get some this year. So I went a little overboard and planted as much as I possibly could with the space we have. So I'm hoping we get some really delicious cabbage plants. I've given them a really good start. They're really healthy and I've been hardening them off for a little over a week now. So I'm really hoping they do well once they're in the ground and that they produce some really good food for us. So I have just two more trays to show you guys and these are trays I've been working on actually longer than anything else minus the artichokes, and there are my onions. They're a little floppy right now, and it's because they're getting really long, but I'm gonna give them a good haircut when they get in the ground on Tuesday. I have a tray of red and a tray of white. This room had some pieces on the walls, but it was completely empty in the middle, and I kind of knew I wanted some style of table or space where I could start seeds, pot up plants, plan the garden, do some painting, kind of an all around, essentially a potting bench, which is exactly what we ended up with. We actually were planning on using a workshop style bench table thing that we had gotten for free from a neighbor. Um, we were actually planning on bringing it in here and just using that, but that same day that we had talked about bringing that work table, workbench in here, Chris found this awesome piece of furniture on Facebook Marketplace for $50. And we didn't jump on it right away because $50 is still a good chunk of money to spend. So what happened was the picture that was associated with the posting was a really bad picture. 
and it was really hard to tell what this actually looked like. So Chris actually went online and he tried to look up the item, but there were no pictures. There were like no, there was like no information on this potting bench online because it is old, guys. I have no idea how old it is. It's probably 10 to 15 years old. It definitely has a mid-century modern type vibe to it. Part of me imagines that it was like from the 70s, but I'm sure it's probably not that old. But the crazy part about it is the box for it had never been opened. Somebody just had this in their garage completely unopened for decades. And so when we found this for $50 and we knew it hadn't been opened and I found a couple pictures online from really diving deep, it was just kind of a no brainer for us to go pick it up because it was really exactly what we wanted. So I'm completely in love with this space. I literally sit here and I organize and I dream up the garden and I plant and I just love it. Without further ado, check out my favorite piece of furniture in our entire house on our entire farm, our potting bench. It has these foldable leaves, I think you call them, that go on each side and you can lift them up and you can push them down. So you just pinch this in and they go right down and so it really works for our space. Callie. Hello. Hi. What do you want? We actually had this stool already in the basement and it works really great for the potting bench. The one thing I love about this potting bench is this upper part where I can store a lot of things. So right now I just have some pens here for writing out my markers. I have some little vases here. I don't know why this is here guys, this used to have eggs in it and now it just has old corn from um, the garden last year. Oh also it comes with a cat. She loves this potting bench. What is that? Oh it's from the corn? You love it. The other thing I love about this potting bench, guys, is this right here. This little bin works great. I just pour water right in, and I'm able to plant about a tray with the space given to me with this little pot, about a tray um, once it's full. Actually, there's a little left over too. So I also love this galvanized metal on the top because it's so easy to wipe the soil off. It just wipes right off and it's really nice and I love all the wood elements too. It even has these cute little drawers. There's even room for some books that I found. I also have a place to store this beautiful painting guys that I just received from our friends over at the Green Dream Project. How beautiful is this painting friends? I'm in love with it. Jim and Jessica have a wonderful channel. They're located in Arizona. They're starting an off the grid homestead. And she is an incredibly talented paper, incredibly talented painter. And we actually won this from a giveaway that they did recently. And I was so excited to get this in the mail and I was just blown away by how beautiful it is. So until I find a space to hang it, which I know it's going to be in this room, I'm going to be keeping it right there where it's safe and where I can enjoy it. I'm getting ready to start a bunch of flowers, like these gorgeous poppies. I just put some of this in the fridge because you're supposed to cold stratify it. How amazing are these? And of course my growler, and no, this is not filled with beer. I actually use this to fill it up with water and then that's what I use when I'm starting seeds. I just fill this up with water and then I, I pour water into this little area. So no friends, I am not just sitting here drinking a growler full of beer, but I am actually using it for starting seeds. <laughs> so here I am sitting on the floor and I can show you guys this little shelf and what I have going on here. So in this shelf, I actually have my seed collection, which is right here. 
I have some trays and containers that I use for starting seeds. And then I have all the containers that I use for potting up. I got these grow bags that I saw in one of um, Roots and Refuge videos and she seems to like them so far. I'll be curious to see what her experience is like after she's used them for just a bit. But I was really excited because I used them the other day and I bottom watered and they worked really well from what I could see. The moisture level was great. Um, my plants seem to have transplanted really well into them. So I'm gonna see what I think. What I like about them is you can plant them directly in the soil. These ones right here, which I'm actually gonna try using with my artichokes soon because artichokes don't like their roots disturbed. They grow really deep root systems. So I thought they'd be a good one to try these with. But I do also have pots that I've reused over time. All different sizes. I have square, I have round. I really like four inches. So if you guys have a good source of four inch pots that are reasonably priced and not too flimsy, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear. So that's it guys. That's my grow room, my favorite room in the house. The room that just a couple months ago was empty and a little depressing has now become a space of real meaning in my life. If you wanna see more of this space, head on over to our Instagram, Sunshine Farm NY. So where do you start your seeds? What does your seed starting setup look like? Do you have a room? Do you use your basement, your garage, or do you have a wonderful greenhouse that I'm totally jealous of? I'd love to hear about what you guys are doing to start your seeds in the comments below. I can't wait to hear from you and I really look forward to sharing my next video with you guys. Bye friends.